People see disabilities like in a wheelchair, things of that nature. But what people don't know is that there's so many people living with these invisible disabilities. And what it means is that just because you can't see it doesn't mean that something isn't going on. With my balance issues, I try to make workouts and I change them. So that way I can learn how to balance. I started having heart problems when I was 10. So I went through a series of valves and balloon surgeries. They were very concerned about putting a pacemaker in. Somebody my age at that time was so young. And eventually after all, you know, we did, it just didn't work. So they did put it in. It was great. The MS came after. So grip is like the weakest part of my, my MS. So I do these a lot. I was so naive to what this meant for the rest of my life. There's days where I have flare-ups. There's days that I'm not able to do certain things. Every motor skill you have could go in an instant with no warning. It's a gnarly little disease. <sighs> I'm just like, okay, like how do we beat this? Like I'll never forget that day, ever. And um, they're like, I'm sorry, this is something, it's incurable. We don't know what your quality of life will look like. I think that's really what this, why God has imposed this mission on me. <laughs> your life is not over, there's still more. I had no clue what Iron Man was. Like I've never heard of Iron Man. I'm not an endurance athlete, I do not swim, I do not bike, I do not run. This story doesn't make sense at all. But I just knew that there was something bigger than me that was happening in my soul, in my spirit, in my body, and I had to do something. Like, this was why I have MS. This is why I've had six heart surgeries. This is why I keep getting back up. It's 30 plus hours a week of training for a full Ironman. This is the exact course I did at Kona. I felt really different at first. I felt like I didn't belong. I didn't feel like I belonged in Kona, but I was there. You have to find something you have to hold on to because you'll lose yourself. This is not a sport for the weak. And because my body was under stress, this whole left leg, I was going 35 miles an hour down the hill. I'll never forget, it completely locked. And I started to have the cramp from the MS and I had to pedal with one leg. I got so many messages after Kona. I mean, we did make history, first person to ride and first person to complete that uh, course on a recumbent trike. It changed everything. Now bike companies are calling me like, hey, let's talk about a stabilization bar. Maybe we'll get you on a two wheel bike. It's important to keep doing this because people are starting to see now. They're like, oh, she needs adaptations, but she's still gonna ride with the best of them. Every mile, I think of someone that can't walk, someone who can't utilize their eyesight anymore, somebody who would die just to run a mile, let alone 30 miles. It's important for people to believe in themselves that have disabilities. Um, it's important for them not to give up. There's an answer. There always is. I'm so blessed. I'm so grateful. I have an able body. I can do it. So there is no fear. I'm gonna cross finish lines, that's gonna happen. I'm gonna advocate. I'm gonna sign up for the race. I'm gonna take on the challenges people won't take on because that's just who I am. But when we do it together, we're so much stronger. My vision's way bigger than Iron Man. It's just the platform I'm using to change the world right now. Help us uncover the true gems of Washington. Have a story idea? Make sure to share it with us. True Northwest at Fox.com.